So Liverpool returned to the top of the Premier League with a 2-0 win over Burnley at Turf Moor. And a bit of a tricky one to analyse this, I have to say, because although Liverpool were so dominant for large swathes of this match, they come away in the end feeling like, actually, if Burnley got a little bit more luck, they could have maybe nicked a point late in the game. But as it happened, Diogo Jota comes on, wraps things up in the 90th minute, and Liverpool claim a vital three points that sees them leapfrog Arsenal to go to the top of the table once again now. I talked about how Liverpool were, were dominant in stages of this game and actually it was basically the entirety of the first half where they probably couldn't believe that they only came away with a 1-0 lead. I mean, I've got some statistics here. Eight shots on target in that first half. Obviously, one of them, Darwin Nunez, is excellent finish from outside the box. But Liverpool, you know, they, they generate 1.36 expected goals over that first half. So they're just all over. They're camped inside the Burnley box and, and getting shots away with ease and, and constantly testing James Trafford in the Burnley goal. But as I say, they only come out away with that 1-0 lead and, and, and feeling like they probably should have done a lot more with what they've created in that first half but in the end the longer it stayed 1-0 Burnley started to grow in belief and you saw that the atmosphere improved as the game wore on because Burnley fans were sensing you know there's an opportunity for us to, to nick a point and obviously I thought Vincent Company's side actually did improve themselves as the, as the game went, went on they sort of got a bit more joy in, in pressing opportunities and, and, and threatened Liverpool a little bit more but in the end obviously Liverpool held firm against that and I think it's telling that although Burnley did you know, managed some threat in that second half, the, the, the end of the game without a shot on target. So Liverpool, I suppose, effectively managed that. But again, it's just the fact that they didn't really put Burnley to the sword when they were massively on top uh, that makes you feel a little bit like this performance lacked a little something and, and Liverpool could have been so much more convincing in, in claiming the three points. Now, there's a couple of talking points I want to just focus on for a moment and it's around refereeing decisions in this game. Again, I don't love talking about refereeing decisions, but it always seems to, to come up in Liverpool games doesn't it and obviously there's two disallowed goals that could have made things look a lot more comfortable for Liverpool maybe that that's what they actually deserved and, and maybe the fact that they do get disallowed and marginal calls is, is the reason you come away feeling that Liverpool haven't played quite so well now the first of those is a, a Darwin Nunez push on, on Charlie Taylor in the box and it's a bit of a weird one this because obviously I think there's no doubt that there's, there's contact of some sort between the players, but the problem is as soon as the referee blows the, the whistle and, and and says that he feels that there's been a, a push there that, that in the, the build-up to, to Gakpo's finish, then ultimately the VAR has got to find strong evidence, that uh, and clear and obvious evidence uh, that there's been an error made by the, the on-field referee. And the problem is when you've got situations where the players are coming together in the box or anything like that, to find clear and obvious ev evidence that you, there hasn't been contact with the players is virtually impossible. They're so near to each other. So it basically, it basically sets the bar for a VAR overturn in that situation ridiculously high. And I think that's why we didn't see an overturn on the goal, even though they probably should have been because you, you watch the replays back and you see that Darwin Nunez basically he maybe brushes past Charlie Taylor but nowhere near enough to, to knock him over and, and cause the ball to be turned over as it was. Um, and I think the, the, the most telling aspect actually was the fact that Yes, some of the Burnley players appealed to the referee, but Charlie Taylor, in the moment after the goal, actually, rather than running to the referee to say, I've been fouled, I've been fouled, he puts his head in his hands, which I think is a recognition of the fact there was no foul. He just slipped and, and, and gave the ball away. So Burnley very lucky in that one. And obviously, Liverpool get another goal disallowed in the second half. Harvey Elliott scoring would have made it 2-0 much earlier, and they would have known that they had the, the points in the bag much earlier. But again... You know, I've seen some some talk about that on social media that that's a, you know controversial to disallow that one, but I think you've got to be fair to the referees sometimes and say you know ninety nine percent of situations where there's a player in front of the goalkeeper when he's taking a shot that's going to get disallowed. You know, I, I doubt that James Trafford would have been able to save it if it had been fully sighted. But referees can't make that judgment. It's not on them to, to to judge whether that's the case or not. They have to simply say whether Salah was in the goalkeeper's eye line, and, and ultimately, I think we have to accept that he was. So, I think one of those decisions, you know, maybe Liverpool could feel was slightly unjust that it went against them. But as I say, the way VAR is worded and the rules around those interpretations kind of made it difficult for the referee to find something to to overturn the on-field decision. And then the second one, I think, is just a, a an open and shut case, really, in terms of disallowing those ones. You, you can't have a player in the in the goalkeeper's eye line. So Liverpool slightly unfortunate in that sense, but I don't think this is a game where you come away thinking they've been robbed on the scale of the, the, the Luis Diaz shambles at, at Tottenham or anything like that. It's just one of those that, you know, on another night maybe could have gone for Liverpool and, and, and today they didn't. And again, that's what made the game so tight up until the end and, and kept Burnley in things. Now, 
uh, at the end of the day, Liverpool, you've got to say, they, they got the job done, as I've, I've spoken about, it maybe being an unconvincing performance in some elements, but at the end of the day, particularly in this busy festive period, you just have to get through with the wins, and, and they've done the job today, which was to basically get themselves back into top spot, put the pressure back on Arsenal and, and hope that maybe they will maybe slip up and, and surrender that top spot uh, permanently. Now, I'm going to go through the performances as usual and, and talk about how I thought the individual players uh, fared. And I'll start, of course, with the, with the goalkeeper. Now, I mentioned that zero shots on target uh, for Burnley in this game. I think that shows you that Alisson's not going to have an easier night than this. Um, you know, just not called into action barely at all, really. And it's a very different Burnley side as well than, than one we've seen in the past where, where Sean Dyche was the manager and you, you're constantly being bombarded with corners or, or high deliveries into the box. We didn't see a lot of that at all. They, they try and play a little bit more football. So uh, Alisson, like I say, he's, you know, he's not having to come out to claim loads of things and it, it, no shots on target. So a really, really easy night for him, a, a straightforward one, certainly. Now moving to the defence, Trent Alexander-Arnold. I want to say Trent, I feel, is, is playing out of his skin at the moment. I think he's doing really, really well. I think four chances created again tonight. Um, you know, it looks really defensively solid as well. I thought a masterful performance. I think, you know, the reason that Liverpool don't score early, it's nothing to do with Trent Alexander-Arnold. He creates so much with his, with his passing range, uh, really orchestrated things. And he also was quite helpful, actually, in that period where Liverpool, they were getting a bit of pressure put on them by Burnley, as I said, around the hour mark. Burnley managed to, you know, felt like... The sense that was an opportunity in the game for them there, and Trent just had you know he helped out in terms of just keeping possession, slowing things down, just making it harder for Burnley to get the ball, making them run, um, and, and calming Liverpool down in possession. He's really really good at that because he's so comfortable on the ball, and as I say, he's still you know still creating chances as well in the game. There's one in particular he creates for Diaz that that should actually be be put away, and it's just this unbelievable raking ball in behind and I think there's very very few players in the Premier League if any who could play that pass and as I say that just sums up where Trent is at at the minute I think he's he's absolutely flying he's he's bang back in form uh, after some question marks over him in the past he's, he's he's so crucial to what Liverpool are doing at the moment I thought it's a really another good uh, really strong performance from him tonight now alongside him in defence maybe a surprise pick Ibrahima Kanate only on the bench for this one and Jurgen Klopp going with Jarrell Kwanzaa, and I thought he absolutely justified that faith again. He wins nine out of his 11 aerial duels, and he's just so dominant on that side of the game. There's one where you think a player's got in behind him as well. He pulls out a brilliant sliding challenge to, to clear the danger. Um, he's just a, a top-class option, and I think, look, if Liverpool are not going to sign a, a defender in, in the January transfer window, and at the moment I don't maybe expect that they will do, then I think that decision is being made on the strength of what Jarrell Kwanzaa is doing at the moment. They obviously think that Jarrell Kwanzaa can step up, can be the main man, can be one of four centre-halves in a team that goes and tries to, to win the Premier League and win the Europa League, the League Cup. Uh, they, they clearly believe that, he, that he's capable of doing that. I think you can see the evidence is there on the basis that Ibrahima Kanate is fit and doesn't get used tonight. They, they keep Jarrell, they throw Jarrell Kwanzaa in, but also it's not just the evidence that Klopp is showing faith in him. It's what Kwanzaa is producing when he's in the team. And I just thought again, another really, really good performance from him. So excited to watch his development. Uh, he, he's doing really, really well on the team, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to play a big role because I think you know, particularly in busy periods, you've got to protect Kanate. He's, he's you know liable to to get muscle injuries and muscle strains. So to have Quanta there is a, a really good option in there is, is just a massive boost to Liverpool and, and to the squad as a whole. Uh, now, he's obviously helped a little bit by the man alongside him, Virgil van Dijk. Again, you know, he's just he's so good, isn't he? You're running out of sort of things to say about him anymore. It's just we get so used to this now. I mean, obviously he had a small dip, didn't he, last season? He didn't look quite himself and there were questions asked about could he get back to his best? But I think what we're seeing at the moment is, is him back to his best. Seven out of seven aerial duels won. That is just a given when Virgil van Dijk's on the pitch. No one can beat him in the air. And what I liked about his performance today as well, he uses the ball really well. You know, Burnley trying to press um, and Virgil van Dijk accepting the ball quite a lot. And, 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 you know, he rarely misplaces one. He's got brilliant passing range to, you know, cross field to get Liverpool and try and switch Burnley's shape and, and open them up a little bit more. And so I thought he used the ball really well. And he, he's doing a little bit more of, of bringing the ball into midfield himself as well, instead of just relying on his passing range. So really mixing things up, adding new things to his game. Um, and we know how good he is. He's absolutely world class and, uh, and brilliant again tonight as Liverpool keep a clean sheet. Now, at left back, obviously, was a vacancy opened up by Costas Simicas' injury. Uh, he's going to be out for a while. And, and Joe Gomez has come in to fill that. And I thought, again, he does, he does really, really well. I think 
you know, you're going to have a knock-on effect in terms of the balance down that side. He's not a left footer. You can't hold that against him. But Liverpool are not going to ever look quite as slick in attack when he's bursting forward down that side. Not because he's not a good footballer, but because he doesn't have that left foot to, to sling the ball in and off a threat, you know, out wide and, and, and hugging the byline. Um, and that's you know that's unfortunate but what he does do it, it shows real class in his defending and, and, and doesn't put a foot wrong in that and I thought he was very very good in terms of locking things down down his side and you know when he when he does get forward he does use the ball well he's very calm on it he's comfortable he may not have that left foot but he can come inside and, and, and pop pop off passes and exchange them with other players and, and allow Liverpool to play in that way did a lot of that today and that was really impressive so um, it's not going to be the same with a with a right footer there, but I think Joe Gomez is the man who, who deserves to be in at left back at the moment, and you know I think he showed why with his performance today. Now I'm going to move into midfield next and, and start as I usually do with the the holding role. Butaru Endo really really liked his his performance today. He wins he wins six duels in there, which is more than any midfielder on the pitch, I believe, and also seven passes into the final third, which I think shows. He's showing that passing range that you maybe didn't think he would have when he first came into the team in terms of, OK, he's maybe not Alexis McAllister in terms of the length of those passes, spraying them everywhere, but he just fires those little quick ones, little short passage in, passes into the number eights and gets Liverpool back on the front foot. And he also goes in there and he, he wins his duels, which is all you want from a, from a holding midfielder. He wins his tackles. Yeah, he turns the ball over in Liverpool's favour. And one thing I thought we saw quite a bit of today, even though Burnley aren't quite as aerial threat as you would have associated with them when it was Sean Dyche, there were a couple of moments where the ball's coming in long and he wins headers. He's not the biggest player, you know, definitely not the biggest in the Liverpool team, but he's got a consistent ability to win headers. And I always say about headers that he's, it's not a thing where it's all about size. You get players with great technique who win headers frequently, despite the size. I think Michael Owen's a really good example of that as a striker. I also think we've seen it quite a lot from Thiago. It's timing of your leap, and that is something that Endo's got. He wins a lot of headers, so really, really helpful to have him in the team. We think Alexis McAllister is going to be back very soon, hopefully for the Newcastle game. But Endo has, has done an unbelievable job coming into the team in, in McAllister's absence, and I think he's going to be a real miss when he goes to the Asia Cup as well. That, that's coming up shortly, and he's going to be away with the Japan national team so it's going to be a big miss because he's been absolutely brilliant in this run of games and, and you know he's been running to the ground a little bit actually he's had to play so much football in this period because Liverpool don't have other options in holding the field and he's been he's been absolutely sensational for me so he deserves massive praise and I believe Klopp gave him a lot of praise in his, his post-match press conference as well that is fully deserved now ahead of uh, ahead of Endo obviously there was uh, some rotation in those two eight positions as well it was Curtis Jones and Sobers line last time out and Klopp went with, with fresh legs for this one. So Ryan Gravenberg on the left hand side. Um, I thought you know he got a lot of criticism, didn't he, for his performance coming off the bench against Arsenal? I did think he was poor. He, he could, couldn't seem to control the ball or or really get to grips with the pace of the game. And I think it was a big reason that Liverpool really struggled to turn the screw late in that game. But I thought he was much better today. We saw you know some of the things we've been seeing that are positive in his early performances for Liverpool. That ability to to accept the ball in the half turn and dribble through midfield. Um, there's one that he gets a shot away after a really really good run uh, from a central position where I just think that that really you know okay the finish doesn't quite come off he scuffs it but that's what you want to see from Gravenberg you want to see him driving at players uh, you know shrugging players off or coming out of tight spaces with the ball and getting Liverpool on attack and I thought we saw quite a bit of that from him today it's all not coming together perfectly for him at the moment uh, you know there's some loose passes some moments where he gets shrugged off the ball but I think you can see why Jurgen Klopp wanted him so much you know there's so much promise there and this is another performance for him to build on he, he plays a part in Liverpool winning the game and, and, and a good strong performance more to come yes but you know games like this where he where he plays a role and, and does as well as he did today I think will be really helpful in terms of his development at Liverpool now just talk about final midfielder now Harvey Elliott very, very unlucky, as I said, to, to have that goal uh, disallowed. He, he passes it in beautifully in off the post, and unfortunately, Mohamed Salah being in, in the goalkeeper's eye line is the, goal, is, is the reason he's denied the goal. But I thought, really good performance from him in, in terms of what he brought in midfield. He's got so much energy in there. He really presses. He's not the biggest, but he's got the ability to get stuck into tackles and, and win the ball. And then when he's got it, he's really, really good at using it. Rarely misplaces the pass. Um, you know he can create chances. He, he's, he's creative, and he also I love the way he lends the ball to players and, and gets Liverpool playing. Uh, you know he's a really good rotational option for someone like Sobbers. Like you know he's not started an awful lot of games at the moment this season. He's obviously 
or particularly in the Premier League at least, Sobersla is the, the favoured man in that right-sided eight position. But I think you've got two really top-class options there between those two and, and Elliot. You know, I'm sure he'll have a huge impacts off the bench and in starting games across the remainder of the season. He's he's really, really sort of cemented himself as an important figure in this team, and again, you know, really helpful in terms of helping Liverpool uh, uh, win again here. So, just moving to the forward line, uh, start with Mohamed Salah, who I thought not his his best uh, best performance really tonight. I think. You know, again, he's someone who's got through an awful lot of football in this period recently, hasn't he? He has three shots today, doesn't get a goal. One of them is a, an absolutely brilliant effort, actually, on his right foot. Takes a, a sensational save from, from Trafford to keep him out. Um, but you know, he creates he creates zero chances today, which is a bit of a surprise because he's been you know really important creatively for Liverpool recently. I do get this feeling, and it's not just Mohamed Salah, that... The, the attack of the, as a whole is kind of going through a little bit of a sticky patch at the moment. So don't want to be too harsh on, on Salah because obviously things aren't kind of working out for, for people around him either. Um, but, you know, I think you saw signs of that again today. The fact that Liverpool don't make the, 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 the dominance they had in that first half pay is, is a you know testament to the fact that, that Salah, Nunes, Gakpo, all the forwards are maybe struggling a little bit. I think what's going to be helpful for them, and obviously Salah's away to AFCON soon, so Liverpool are going to have to step it up, those guys around him, because he's been... You know, he's been so important in terms of what he brings with goals. But I think I'm hoping that, you know, as Liverpool come out of what is the, the busiest part of the season, that maybe, you know, that attacking fluency can sometimes, when you get a little bit tired, is the first thing to go. And it makes it difficult for these players, I think, when they, you know, they've got so many games in the legs at the moment. So I'm hoping that fluency will come back. And, and again, when, he's, when you get Salah back from AFCON, that he will be absolutely flying. Maybe he leads Egypt to a win and that sends him off to, to, to come back and, and finish the season really strongly, we will have to see. I want to talk about Darwin Nunes as well. And um, you know, start off with his goal, an absolutely brilliant finish. Did not look like a man who hadn't scored uh, in twelve games the way he just caressed that into the bottom corner. We need to see more of that from him. You know, but it, this just shows that he's capable. Uh, you know, he he can finish. You know, he's not all about just missing chances. I think we saw some messiness in his build up today again. Still, you know, that is still present. We're still seeing Jurgen Klopp trying to knock those rough edges out of his game. But I really hope that that goal can give him massive confidence because I think you know if he can use that boost now and, and go on a little scoring run, particularly because Salah's going to be away soon, that would be massive for Liverpool. They, they need Nunes to turn up and and do that and get more goals and. As I say, really beautifully taken goal today. So should do wonders for his confidence, and and, and hopefully it does uh, going forward. Now uh, talk about Gakpo now, just to to finish off in terms of the starting eleven. Uh, very unlucky, as I said earlier, to to have that goal disallowed. That's a you know a, a call for nothing really. But in the end, he does get the assist for for Nunez's goal. A lovely little uh, uh, you know pass off to Nunez to to allow him to run onto the ball and and, and just caress it into the bottom corner. He has a 93% pass accuracy, which is, you know, for a player who's trying things, which he does, is really, really impressive. And I think Gakpo, you know, he's had a lot of criticism, really, but I'm actually quite a big fan. I, I really like him in that sort of false nine role when he plays it, or, or as an option on the left-hand side, as he mostly played today. Um, I just think he's he's sensible with the ball. He, he protects it quite well. You know, there are times where he could be a little bit stronger on it, but there are also times where he's he's running through and he's got players hanging off his back. So he's a bit of a, you know, hard to, to sum him up sometimes. But I, I just think he's one of, uh, of those attacking options and he's vitally important. I'm going to have a lot of games to play between now and the end of the season. And I think we saw again today, he could have ended with a goal and an assist. And I think that would have summed up a, a decent performance from him. Again, like the other forwards, hoping that when he comes out of this period as well, he'll kick on a level and the, we, you know Liverpool can move past that, that stickiness they've maybe had in attack of late and, and really go on and, and attack this league and, and try and win it. Now, I'm just going to finish off with a, a couple of the subs. Luis Diaz, again, he's one who's not in quite in form at the moment. I think you saw that with the ball that Trent Alexander-Arnold puts him in behind with. And it, you know you, you need to be finishing those one-on-one -on -one chances and he, he doesn't in that situation. Let's Burnley off the hook, keeps them in the game. You, know, you really need to see those hit in the back of the net. Hopefully, again, he's another one who wants the fatigues out the way that, that he can really start to kick on because he's not been in the best form over the last month or so I'd say so really want to see a little bit more from him and the final sub of course I want to talk about is, is Diogo Jota comes on and, and, and wraps it up for Liverpool and for me it's absolutely huge that they can keep him fit over the remainder of the season he is Liverpool's second best attacker behind Mohamed Salah as far as I'm concerned and probably is equal in terms of finishing off the chances he gets and I think 
he's just absolutely you know I think for Liverpool to have an attack or a, a set of attacking options that are good enough to win the Premier League they need Diogo Jota to stay fit I think it's vital that he does because he, and he showed that today barely on the pitch for a minute and he, he, he smashes the goal in uh, let's hope this is a run where he can get on now between now and the end of the season of staying fit because he's absolutely vital to Liverpool's hopes of winning silverware if you ask me now that's my summary of the game and, and how I saw it. Please do let me know in the comments what you thought. Who was your man of the match? You know, you disagree with the, some of my comments on the players. Do you think who you think played really well or who do you think didn't play so well? And, and what did we really learn from this game? Do let me know in the comments, as I say. And as ever, I'm going to finish off by asking you to, if you don't subscribe, please do click that subscribe button. It always helps to, to grow my following and get me out to more Liverpool fans. And as always, please do like the video as well. And we're coming out of this busy, busy part of the season. It's it's probably going to slow down a little bit more, a bit of a gap to the next game, but there's still so much more to come this season. So many trophies to be won and, uh, and Liverpool. It's a very, very exciting time for Liverpool, isn't it? So best way to stay in touch with all that is to subscribe and I will see you guys very, very soon.